What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for yet another Tottenham update. And Ange Postacoglu has been speaking post uh, post season friendly. Newcastle, we drew 1 1, lost 5 4 on penalties. And he's been talking about transfers and summer business. And he's been saying that. Um, that there is a plan in place that he's really comfortable with. He's looking to get signings in before pre-season this summer and the attack is definitely one of the areas that he needs new additions in. And he goes on to say that the good thing for us is that we know what we need to do. We've had a plan in place for a while and it's now just about going through that process. So um, he seems quite confident. Yeah, but I'm sure in this day and age, I feel like most clubs are coming more prepared now, especially a lot of the top clubs. So I think back in maybe you know, five, six, seven, eight, ten years ago, um, clubs were more opportunistic with their signings there, and, and because of the money swirling around the Premier League, they were a bit more laissez-faire with who they were signing. They were more happy to spend, you know, 10, 15 million on, on or 20 million on players who were squad players or take a punt on a player, those kind of things. You know, Jeff Schlub went for 15 million uh, for like five years ago. So I think nowadays it's a very different landscape. The Premier League teams are coming a lot smarter. You've got teams like Bournemouth and teams like, um, you know, Brighton who are coming up with m um, much more coordinated plans now. Like these even mid table teams. So I'm sure what Anne says all this stuff, I'm sure he means it. And I, I do, I'm sure that there is a plan. But the re I think the reality is everyone has a plan now. So it's about mm. who can execute it the best. And that, that's going to be how. Um, you'll be judged in the summer. Yeah, I just hope that, you know, he's confident about executing that plan. And I think that's what came across in that interview. And it's just... That's something Tottenham have lacked, though, in previous that's, that's years. That's what I'm saying. Like, last year, you know, we, we had a plan. We executed it well at some point. But by the end of the transfer window, we were still scrambling around, trying to find this one, trying to find a defender. We let Davinson Sanchez go after the transfer window shut. And we left ourselves way too short of the centre-back options. And it came back to bite us. Mm -hmm. And I remember us sitting here on transfer deadline day saying, this decision is going to come back and bite us and that's exactly what happened mm -hmm. so I just hope we don't leave ourselves in that kind of situation again and if he is confident that we can you know implement the plan that we do have then hopefully we're in for a good season next year I guess the difference between this summer and last summer is um, last summer he still has a lot of working out to do uh, he, he mm. can't know fully what he wants until he's had a good look of everyone because uh, as much as you can have a look at them in pre-season that is, you know, a few months. Is that really enough to say this guy's no good or this guy is? Probably yeah, not. Yeah, but there's a thing about knowing what you want and there's a thing about clearly leaving yourself too short. And that's what No, I did. know that. I'm just saying, but now he's going to have a much clearer idea. These guys are not going to be good for me. These guys are going to be good for me. And they can go push ahead with exactly what they want. I think last year, they can have an idea of what they want, but they, I, th I think, there's, as Ange would say, there was less clarity with what they wanted. And now there'll be that more, more clarity this summer. Yeah, absolutely. So, look, uh, pre-season will start in, what, early July, mid-July, I mid think July, it is. Probably. So let's hope we get a number of signings in before then, hopefully some players out well, the door as well. Look before June, I would say, because... Before oh, because of the PSR. Yeah. So I think... I think I would. I wouldn't expect all. Obviously, all our business to be done by then. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if one or two bit, bits of business are done before then. Yeah, I really hope so. I really hope so. And you look at last year. Whatever you like to say about Spurs transfers, we have been. Even if we left ourselves short last season, we have been getting better at it since maybe Paratici has come through the door. Yeah, not everyone's going to be a success. Um, and I think that goes for every club. But it has got better, hasn't it? Well, even under Conte, our last signing was like mid July, wasn't it? So um, we did do quite a bit of business. As much as. You can you argue about whether the business is good or not. We got them all in very, very early. Mm -hmm. um, some would say too early because we didn't do business for the last <laughs> six weeks. And then people were getting frustrated wearing the signings. But um, that was positive. We were getting our business done a lot earlier. So I think that's going to be the main aim. But the problem is, obviously, you're trying to get your business done early. But clubs know you're trying to get a business done early. So they hike the prices up early on. And that's where this game of chicken comes. Who's what, who's going to blink first? Are you going to pay, or are you going to the or the um, selling club going to lower the price? And that's why a lot of these um, deals get dragged out. And the problem that we have is a problem. It's a blessing and a curse. But the problem we have with with Levy, he will never blink. He will he'll wait till the last second. And a lot of times it costs cost us deals. And that's yeah. the reality. But. A lot of the times it has saved us money, and that's why we're in such a good financial position. But with these kind of like PSR rulings and the you know teams we're trying to take advantage of, they know that they've got that deadline of that specific date, mm -hmm. and that's an early date in terms of the transfer window. So I do fully expect us to be signing players before that date. 
for that, that puts us in a very strong position. But yeah, but in, when it comes to in general, that that that's uh, the issue, I think. Yeah, it's almost like there's two trance windows. There's like the PSR one, and then yeah. there's like the real trance window after we'll do that. A, we'll do a PSR deadline <laughs> and, uh, stream. <laughs> Um, let's talk about specifics now and a player that we've actually spoken about not for a while but under Conte I remember speaking about him quite a bit and he goes by the name of Andrea Cambiasso of Juventus and Calcio Mercato say that Tottenham will rival Aston Villa for defender Andrea Cambiasso who is valued at £34 million by Juventus an interesting player because he's very versatile Played, he's played at right wing, wing back left wing back left back centre mid right wing um, all throughout the course of this season um, he's scored two goals, getting three assists. So he's a player that can probably, you know, play back up to a doggy, play back up oh. to Pedro Porro. Uh, what's your thoughts on him? Yeah, I think he what, he plays wing back, doesn't he? On the on, the, on, on both the sides, yeah. Side. Both Obviously sides. He's left footed though. So. He's left footed, but this season he has played uh, nineteen games at right wing back and le- eleven games at left wing back. Okay, so he's versatile. That's that's positive. I've 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 seen whenever I've seen Juve play, he does seem to be. Um, one of their better players a lot and I know the Juve fans really like him I think they think he's a very very high quality he, he's, uh, he's both footed he's both footed but mm. I th- okay well and that's always helps um, obviously you can be both footed but you do generally have a strong foot like Sonny he's both footed but he's right footed um, so I mean I'd, I'd, I think that kind of player definitely interests me because a versatile player can cover both Poro and Adoghi and also has got the quality to fill in um, to, to break into the team as well uh, with his ability obviously he's had, had a really good couple of years at Juventus so I think he would be a top signing um, Villa I'm sure they're looking at him um, they've got Champions League football to offer they do have uh, Dinia and Mor- uh, Moreno there so they do have a couple of options probably we'll have to shift one of those to get him in I would assume yeah but we all know Paratici's links into Juventus maybe he can swang- wangle something and for us and also we're in a better position PSR wise so oh that's we, definitely we true we might yeah. be able to offer a better deal although with Villa now with Champions League money, I don't know how that affects their PSR. Apparently they're still struggling with it a little bit. So we'll see what happens. And apparently there's different rules for UEFA as well and they're struggling with those numbers. So we'll have to wait and see um, J- June the 30th, I guess. <laughs> um, let's talk about Dominic Solanke. TalkSport, for some reason, are saying that Tottenham are contemplating a summer swoop for Bournemouth striker Dominic Solanke for the number nine option. I, I, I don't mind it. I think he's a, a good striker. And obviously, what was it, 18 Premier League goals this season? He showed what he's about. Um, I think he improved on last season. Last season, I think he got 12, and a lot of people were, you know, talking about him. Is he going to get a big move? Or they weren't quite sure if he could sustain it. This season, he's really kicked on. Obviously, under Ira Ola, who plays to his strengths, high high pressing. He's very physical. Um, really, I was really impressed with his ability to bully some very physical centre backs, and uh, I think obviously a lot of the time, if you, I get the feeling if he had better players around him, uh, he could even improve a lot. I think he's amazing in the air. I think he scored some unbelievable headers um, this season. Um, I think he's a, quite a cool finisher. He's quite good. He's back to goal. But in terms of, uh, you know, getting assists and stuff, I haven't seen that side of his game too much. I do think it would cost a lot of money. Three assists this season. I do think it would cost a lot of money. Um, when I when I look at like him between him and Tony, obviously Tony would probably be a bit cheaper, but maybe you don't have the question marks over the attitude and also Solanke's three years younger than Ivan Tony. I do feel like Tony's all round game is better than Solanke though. I think he's a bit better with his passing ability and um, and in, with him getting assists and stuff like that. And when it comes to being a threat in front of goal. I know Tony has been a bit on a bit of a goalless run, but I do feel like they're probably just as good as each other in front of goal. So, considering Tony's cheaper, I do think Tony's the better player. But it's whether you want to take the risk um, with the attitude problems and stuff like that. Yeah, I do agree with that. But I'm looking at Solanke and what English tax, Premier League tax. You're probably looking in north of 50 million. Definitely, yeah. Uh, 55. A striker that scores that amount of goals, you're going to have to always going to look at that amount. Of money 60 at a stretch. But I'm I'm, I'm looking. Yeah, at Brendan Johnson was. 50. 47, wasn't he? 47, but they had uh, PSI issues that they had to get past. Yeah, but Bournemouth seem to be the kind, of, the kind of... As much as I don't think they're struggling with PSR, but they do seem to be the kind of team like they have to listen to an offer of that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think they will have to listen to an offer. But what I'm trying to say is that when you're going to spend that much money on a number nine, I think you can get better ones from outside of Europe, um, from outside of uh, the Premier League in Serie A, um, in the Bundesliga, these kind of leagues where you can get... A Benjamin Sesco, you can get um, maybe Jokerez will be a bit higher than that. Maybe he'll be like 80, 90 million. 
but I'd much prefer to put myself in, in that camp than maybe a Dominic Solanke. I feel like Dominic Solanke will probably be a good signing for us, but I still feel it's a bit underwhelming. I don't think he's that much of an upgrade on Richarlison. Yeah. I think he pro- make you, there's an argument to say he's a better player. I, don't, I like Richarlison's. He's a, never, don't you think he's a better finisher, on, isn't he? Probably, um, especially when he's got a bit more time to think about it. But in terms of does he put us in a new no, he doesn't. level, I, no. I don't feel like he does. I feel like Tony potentially does, but I don't think, I don't know about Solanke. Like, if I was to offer you, like, because they're looking like to get Joshua Xerxes for like 45, 50 million, like, you'd prefer to go for him than maybe a Solanke for the same price. Yeah, I'll, I'll say so. So I think they're actually, a few years ago, the number nine, there was like very few number nines on the market, but now there are like, seem to be quite a lot. There's a lot, but there's no like truly outstanding ones, which, which are realistic. Like there, there are a lot of strikers, but you know, unless you're spending, um, you know, close to a hundred million in the ballpark of like, you know, 60, you've got options, but like, how many options are, um, are 100% a massive upgrade on Richarlison? I don't know how many there are. I'll tell you, Benjamin Sesko is one. Yeah, Sesko, but this is one of the biggest talents in Europe. Uh, yeah. I'd love to get him, but, you know, he's going to be talked about with a lot of big clubs. But with Madrid signed up already, I don't know. Well, look, well the thing is, him. Arsenal are looking for a number nine. And, Maybe and they'll probably get first pick, won't they? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I'd lo- I love Sesko, but... He's uh, he would be a bit of a pipe dream, I, I, I think. Yeah, shame we didn't get him a year a year earlier, and we would have got in there, you know, from RB Salzburg. But um, last but not least, let's talk about Richarlison once again. PL Brazil, a publication out in Brazil, say that Richarlison wants to remain remain at Tottenham despite the links to clubs in Saudi Arabia. Spurs are happy for him to stay and do not intend to listen to any bids. The two parties have already held talks over his future and the striker is in the plans for next season. So they're pouring cold water on uh, Richarlison exit rumours. And like a week ago... It seemed like all the press were gearing towards Richarlison's move, linking him to this one, linking him to that one. And then as the week has pr- kind of progressed, it seems as though the noise coming out of the press is that he is actually going to stay. Well, who else has reported it? Well, um, midweek we heard, you know, Spurs are split, and now we're hearing, because it's like gone from one end to the other end, and now we're hearing that he wants to stay and we want him to stay. I think, I think, we're, uh, I think Spurs probably do want him to stay, but I think as well, if they, if they can get their money back, if they get a big offer, then I think they'll probably be open with whether they can get that big offer or not. Um, I think that'll be a question. I think from Richarlison's point of view, I'm not surprised that he would want to stay. Um, obviously, well, he's at a big club. It's, he's had a decent season. He'll feel like if he can get on the pitch for more minute, for more games than he has this season, his goal tally will improve. And as well, I did feel like his overall game was improving the more game time he got. And then once he had injuries, and then he would come back and he wouldn't be the same. And uh, right at the beginning of the season... He was suffering with that um, injury before the surgery and he clearly wasn't, um, he was really struggling on the pitch and you could see his all-round game was being affected and then he had that surgery and he came out like a new player. So I do think we've got a good player there. Whether he's a player who we really believe could uh, lead the line for a team challenging for big trophies, that's up and that's probably up for, uh, the jury's out on that and I would probably argue at the, at the moment the evidence suggests to me no. But that doesn't mean that um, he can't improve some of the things that he needs to, and we know he's a good finisher, um, and he could potentially be, in a, a, be a 15 to 20 goal a season um, striker, in my opinion, if he was to stay. So I understand um, him wanting to stay, and a lot of Tottenham um, in on the hierarchy thinking, why sell him and go out searching for a striker, and we have a striker here who could potentially get us goals. So I get I get that thinking. I would like an improvement personally. I like someone who's, who's an upgrade. I think either way, whether we keep him or sell him, I don't know, maybe we should sell him, as, uh, we should sign another one, but it depends on what we see of Son. So yeah. I think there's a lot of moving parts. But yeah. I also think if we were to keep him, Richarlison, and then also really invest in a winger, you would see more of Richarlison as well, just off, just well, just with that. So I think I'm not, I'm not uh, angry about Richarl- the poten- potential for Richarlison staying, but I also think if we get a good offer for him, um, I would rather try and upgrade him if we can. The thing for me, like, yeah, I, I'm also like not angry if Richarlison stays or not, but if it hampers us in the transfer market and it hampers us not getting another number nine or not getting a top winger or something like that, then it'll be annoying for me because I think, like, I like Richarlison 
Um, I, I mean, I've made that clear on a number of occasions, but I just don't think he's completely suited to the system that we do play. And I want players that are going to be completely suited. That's why I don't really want to see Deki on the wing anymore, even though I know he's a really good player. Um, the injuries as well are a massive concern for me because there were rumours that he had his injury problems last year and needed surgery all the way till the end of the season was playing through injury. This season, he's had no ends of problems with injuries. Every time he seems to have gone on a good run, the injuries seem to happen. He came back, got injured again, came back, got injured again. Um, and it's just really a big source of frustration. I don't know if he had these injury problems at Everton or not. But it seems as though they've been hampering him his whole time at Spurs. Yeah, and that's also a concern. So, for me, if we get if we get a good offer, we should take it. I don't believe that report that says we're not we're not going to listen to any offers. I don't believe that for one second. I do believe that Richarlison would consider would rather probably stay than mm. leave. But I don't believe we're so against it, uh, him leaving. Yeah, fair play. But let me know your thoughts in the comments section below regarding all the news stories we brought to you today. That is your Tottenham update. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on you Spurs.